We're often told that in order to achieve our goals, we really need to focus our desire for it, our wanting, and that if we aren't getting our goals, it's because we don't want it enough. So we're told to set vision boards, to visualize and focus our desire and really get passionate about it. That's the biggest mistake. I'm going to show you why. And I'm going to show you the real secret to achieving your goals. Coming up. Welcome to The Power of Quiet. What we're here to do is help you really get in touch with the real you. That part of you that has no limitation. That's full of happiness and happiness. And one of the things that we focus on this channel over and over again is dropping desire. And this is not anything new. This has been talked about for centuries. Buddha talked about this. He said that life is suffering and the cause of suffering is desire. Therefore, if you end desire, you eliminate suffering. And in the Bible, it even says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, desire is something that is very confusing to the mind. Because inside of us, we have this idea that in order to get something, we must want it first. And a lot of self-help gurus and coaches and practices are all about building up your desire. Like that book, Think and Grow Rich. What it says that is, is if you aren't getting your goals, it's because you don't want it enough. You gotta strengthen your wanting. And we hear about this, like, you know, our old high school coach always said, you know, you gotta want it, go for it, right? We hear this all the time. And so this has been ingrained into our mind. And because of this idea, and oftentimes the fact that we find it hard to conceive how we can achieve things unless we have a desire for it. And if we dropped all that desire, what would we do? What motivation would we have? We would just sit around and do absolutely nothing. And because of this belief, we don't go there. We don't explore what the real truth is about desire. And even those of us that have been practicing this and have been realizing the value of letting go desire, I think sometimes deep down inside, we still hold on to this belief and it stops us from really going all the way because we're afraid that if we dropped all our desire, we would have no attachment to the world, to the things that we love in the world. And we would do nothing. We would contribute nothing. We would be nothing. And we don't want to go there. So on this video here, I want to really put a spotlight on what desire is. So we get some clarity and be encouraged to really go for it. So what is desire? Really, desire. Now first thing we can look at if we want to get some clarity about desire is look at the dictionary's definition of it. If you look up the word want in the dictionary, the definition that it'll tell you is that want is suffering. Want is lack. It's not having. It's a state of neediness, emptiness, loneliness. That's in the dictionary. You can look it up for yourself. And the idea behind desire. See, this is the desire that we're talking about. We're getting some clarity here. See, what desire is, is it's a belief that once something happens, once I achieve something, and it could be something simple like a new car or a new relationship, but even deep, more deeply, like if we have a health issue, we're sick, or we're in a position in our life 
where things aren't going well and we're suffering. We're really in a lot of pain. And we have this idea, this desire that once I get out of the situation or once I achieve this thing, like this goal of mine, then I'm going to be happy. And that happiness, now we're looking at it in the future. You see, once I get this car, once I get this new career, once I have this big accomplishment in my life, then I'll be happy. But where is that? In the future. And now look at what we're doing to ourselves by looking at it this way. Number one, we are putting our happiness on that thing or that event. We are assigning our happiness to something external in the future. And two, we're making a decision. See, check this out. If it's in the future that we will achieve our happiness, then what are we deciding for ourselves in the meantime? That we're unhappy, that we're miserable. So we are literally deciding to be negative in the meantime until that thing will allow us to be positive and be happy. And you see how crazy that is? How can we achieve positive by being presently negative? How is that possible? Right? Now, it's one thing to talk about it, but let me show you. Let me show you the difference between wanting and having because they're totally opposite. You can't want and have at the same time. And when you let go of the wanting, you fall into having. And this is something that you can experience firsthand. I'm gonna show you right now. And then after you've experienced this, then you'll see the answer to that question that if I let go of all of my wanting, how do I achieve things? You're going to see exactly what the truth is here. All right? So first, right now, just think about something that you want in life. Think about something that you want. You really want. It could be a goal. Or it could be for a situation to change. Maybe you have a conflict in your life. You're experiencing some suffering in your life right now, maybe physically or emotionally, and you want that to change. So what is it that you want in your life? Now first, let me ask you this question. How long have you been wanting this? Now, it could be a couple of months, could be a couple of years, it could be decades, right? Chances are you've been wanting this for a long, long time. And if wanting worked, wouldn't you have achieved it already? So right here, we can blow a hole in this theory that in order to get things, we got to want it. Because you're not getting it. So that's obviously not true. And notice your now feeling. It's a feeling of emptiness. It's a feeling of lack, not having. And that's not such a great feeling, is it? And it's a feeling of absence, an absence of happiness. Now, who is that up to, really? Now, say like, what it is that you're wanting is a new car. Does your happiness really come from that hunk of metal? Seriously? Or, you know, when you achieve these things and you feel happy, like, wow, I got this. I feel great. What's really going on? You're giving yourself permission to feel good. You're deciding, now I have it. 
I decide to be happy. It's not that thing that gives it to you. It's your decision. Because of that, now I can be happy. So if that's all it takes, if it's just your decision, why not just decide now to be happy? Now, it's one thing just to, well, decide to be happy. But we find it very difficult to be happy while we're still wanting. Because that want is a feeling of lack. So, trying to decide to be happy while we're still wanting, it's like trying to put a band-aid on cancer. You're not going to really get anywhere with that. So, first, let's remove the want. And this is a decision. Now think about that thing that you want. And now just decide. Since you're not having it anyway, you don't have anything to lose, could you just decide right now in this moment to let go of wanting it? Just a little bit. And could you let go of wanting it a little bit more? And could you let go of wanting it a little bit more? Yes or no? It's just a decision. It's super simple here. Could you let go of wanting it a little bit more? See, that wanting is something that you're doing. And if you're doing, all I have to do is just decide to stop. Could you let go of wanting it a little bit more? And let that wanting go even more. 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 And even more. And even more. and even more. And don't worry about the future. Don't worry about later on today, tomorrow, what happens just right now in this moment. Could you let that wanting go, the want for that, just to see what that feels like. And could you let that wanting go even more? It's your decision. You're the boss. Could you let it go a little bit more? And a little bit more. Now notice how you feel. Notice if you feel a little bit lighter. You feel more at ease and more positive. You feel that difference? Just feeling a difference, right? And that's proving what Buddha said. That when you drop desire, you end the suffering, which is the pain of lack, that emptiness and loneliness. It disappears when you let the wanting go. And just check to see if it's more possible to have that thing now than it was a couple of moments ago. Just see if it's more possible. Maybe you don't have a specific answer, but maybe you do. Maybe a solution now is coming right to you. But just notice the difference. You see that? You feel that more possibility that's showing up? More positivity? And that shows you the shift in consciousness that you are moving from lack to having. That's it. So now let's go even further. Since want is the opposite of having, and you can't want and have at the same time, right? See, just like you can't stand up and sit down at the same time, you can't want and have at the same time. So could you let go of wanting so you could have? And could you let go of wanting so you could have? And could you let go of wanting so you could have? And could you let go of wanting so you could have? And even more. And even more. 
And could you let go of wanting so you could have? And see if it's more possible to have. See if it feels more like you have it already in the now. And that's a consciousness. And even Henry Ford said, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So now when you just have this feeling, and when you let this wanting go completely, this feeling, which is maybe like a little bit of a taste of it, when all that wanting is dropped, it's a conviction that you have it, like a certainty. You know, and you know you know. And how easy is it to accomplish things when you come from a place of knowingness? And now this should clear up that whole question about do you really need to want something in order to achieve it? No. When there's no wanting in the picture, what you're left with is the ability to decide. And that's all you do. You just decide. I'm having it. I'm having that car. I'm having that great career, that great business. I'm having that relationship. And you know. Now you've done this before with out even realizing it, I bet. Where there's just something that you saw and you just decided, I'm having that. There's no wanting, no lack, no neediness for it. You decided I'm not having it. And you accomplished it very easily. You may have even found that it just fell right into your lap. So this shows you also how powerful you are. That your mind is a creative instrument and you have to examine your thinking. Really watch what it is that you're holding in mind because whatever it is that you picture is what you create. And look at what you're picturing when you're wanting something. Now before we establish that wanting, it's a promise of happiness in the future. So when you're wanting something, you're picturing it as maybe happening in the future, but it's always out there. When you're wanting something, you're picturing not having it. So that's what you create, not having it. And that's why the things that you've been wanting, you've been wanting for a long, long time and not getting up because you've been holding the wrong thing in mind. Now, if you really want to learn how to start mastering your mind, hold the right thing in mind and set goals that will create exactly what you choose in life, then go to my website. I'm going to put a link in the description below. And at the top of the front page, you can enter your name and email address. I'm going to send you some keys to wording goal statements so you can set the right goals that will focus your mind to creating exactly what you choose to create all the time. It's super powerful and it'll really get you clear about how your mind works and how you are in charge. You're the master. So check that out and practice letting go of wanting. Watch what happens.